Hello, Sid Roth here with Kerry Kirkwood, and Kerry is a member of our board, and he has a stellar reputation on prophecy and words of knowledge. And he was doing his own television show with us that's on our ISN network, It's Supernatural Network. Kerry, we have so many great shows coming aboard. Uh, explain this set, though, to me, please. Well, it's called The Currency of Heaven. And it's really, uh, even has a business bend to it a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. And we talk about the principles of the kingdom of God, but also the currency that we spiritually connect into heaven and how to have breakthrough and how to expend the currency that God has given us through His inheritance. Uh, I'm so excited to have your new show, but uh, he t then told me that he heard the voice of the Lord. And it has to do with the next presidential election and a few other amazing things. Tell me what happened. Well, I was just waking up and I was just in that twilight zone and I really heard an internal voice inside of me that I knew to be the Lord. And because I wasn't thinking along these lines at all, I heard the Lord say to me, He said, I am in charge of the media, which was totally contrasting to how I feel about things. Because if you're like most of us, we, we start talking back to the TV when we hear things that are so negative. Look, I can't even watch sports now, and I'm a <laughs> sports fan because it's all become so political uh, it and is. polarized. And the word talks about political is the word faction. Yes. So when I heard this voice saying, I'm in charge of the media, and I thought to myself, how could this thing be? And the Lord spoke to me out of 2 Kings and chapter 22, 22, and it's a story concerning Ahab and Jezebel, which is exactly what we think is happening right now. And, and so uh, Ahab wants to go to war with Gilead, and he brings down Judah, who's a separate tribe at that time, and invites Judah to come down to that. Will you help us go to war and, and, and beat, beat uh, Jabesh Gilead? And so Judah said, bring out the prophets. Well, he brings the prophets of Baal. He brings the prophets that Jezebel had been formulating which I knew was the media. I mean, immediately in my mind, this is the, the prophets of Baal and Jezebel. And so he you comes You don't think of it, but you have prophets of the demonic and you have prophets of God. Right. They both prophesy. Yeah. And whichever one we believe, you believe the prophets and you'll prosper. Prosper in fear or prosper in the faith of the Word of God. That's powerful. So, and so we realize that if we give ourselves into fear, then we're being consumed and, and everything we see is filtered through fear. Or we can hear what God is saying and filter it through light. And so when I, he, he gave me these verses of Scripture and Judah and says, well, is there not another prophet in the land? And he says, well, there's one. I don't, I don't like this prophet. I hate him. And he said, he never prophesies anything good. <laughs> so the prophet comes down, Micaiah, and he comes down and he says, uh, uh, we need to hear from God. Uh, Ahab says kind of flippantly, we need to hear from God. And so my, Micaiah said, well, let me inquire of the Lord. He comes back in a few minutes. He said, I've seen this vision with the Lord, and it is that that the throne room of God is filled with the host of heaven, which we know are angels. And God poses a question to, to Micaiah in this vision. And he says, who will go and bring Ahab down into the battle that he may fall, be defeated by Jabesh Gilead? And so they were all discussing this. And you see the verses of Scripture. And finally one says, I can. So God says, well, how would you do this? He said, I would be to them a lying spirit. And I would go upon them in lying spirit and draw them into the battle. And that's when I heard the Lord say, this is exactly what's happening in the media. I have released a lying spirit. So my theology is saying, God, you don't have a lying spirit. Of course. And so how would this thing be? It just doesn't match up but with it's that. But it's there. But it's there. It's there. I can't deny that the scripture there. So, so he goes down and he becomes a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets that Jezebel had been feeding at her table. And table is fellowship and communion. So they're hearing all of this demonic stuff. And so they're spewing all these things out. And so he comes down to the battle and he's defeated right then. Here is the significant part that I heard. The Lord say, I'm in charge of this. And I'm the one that's allowing them to hear all this demonic stuff. Do not be disturbed by what you hear, by poll numbers and, and who's doing this. And they're behind the scenes and all of this conspiracy theory. And there may be an element of truth. But even 2% truth with 98% poison is rat poison. Of course. It's, so why even subject ourselves into any of that? So when he said, I'm in charge of this and I'm going to allow them to fill up these bowls, bowls of iniquity, 
And so then when I raise up my servant Trump with a high hand, it will literally show the lying spirit for what they are. And people's eyes are going to be open and truth is going to come in. Truth is not just what we hear, but truth is what we see done. And there is a release of the spirit of truth that's coming on our land that's going to destroy this lying spirit that has been filtering through the minds and hearts of people. It will be as like 2 Corinthians 4, the God of this world hath blinded their eyes. Now, so now the spirit of truth Truth is going to open their eyes to see the reality of what God's doing. So if I'm understanding you right, God himself told you that Trump supernaturally, because it won't be natural, I mean, with just my, my I, I have a logical side and I, I have a spiritual side. My logical side says if there's going to be right in ballots, there's no way that right. President Trump can be reelected. But you, you mean God's going to Trump Trump? He's going to he's going to raise him up with a high hand, even if God has to rewrite the ballots and write over what they're doing. In other words, God doesn't do something illegally just to uh -huh. prove it, but of he's course. going to stop something and interrupt them. So in the, the minds of the ingenuity, they think themselves to be so smart and just like Haman did in time of mm -hmm. Esther, that God is recreating an, uh, an abyss for them, spiritual, emotional abyss, that they're going to fall into that, that their wisdom is going to come out and be foolishness. Well, I am 100 percent convinced that now there's something that is even to me far more exciting than anything he just said. And that's pretty exciting, but far more to me uh, because I like to see the good and wait till you hear what happened. He's on my board of directors, as I said, uh, and he was at the board meeting and he didn't say a word which I thought was kind of strange, but I didn't say anything. I figured, well, I guess he didn't have anything to add. And I, I really kind of just dismissed it. It wasn't a big deal. But I, I observed that. Well, that night before the board meeting, you had a dream and that whole board meeting you were trying to process. And now he tells me the dream. I say, Carrie, you should have just taken over the board <laughs> meeting and told me this dream is so fabulous. Tell me about the dream. Well, it was in the early morning of that of the board meeting that way. And so I wasn't thinking I didn't go to bed with any of this thing on my mind. But in the middle of this dream, and I'm not one that has a dream every night. I'm sure we do. but We don't remember. But this dream was so significant. But I was in the dream. I was in my office at church and a man appears before me right in, the, in my desk. And he has a satchel under his arm, looks very lawyer-like. And he says to me, I am authorized to give you a donation of a million dollars. And so I said, oh, good. <laughs> Happy for that. <laughs> My goodness, you yeah. don't get too excited. Yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly for that. I thought, I don't want to wake up for this dream. I want to just keep living this one out. And he says to me, I, I said to him, first of all, I said, well, just make it out to the church. And, uh, he, and he tells me, he said, because you were instrumental in restoring my son to his brothers years ago. So I was thinking in my dream, I'm having this conversation. I don't know who your son is, and I'm sure I ministered to a lot of people. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that something happened along the way, but I carry no proprietary ship over this message that helped your son. And he said, I still want to make this donation. I said, great. He said, but first, I must audit your church to see if your church can handle the weightiness of this gift. And I thought, okay, I woke up from the dream and now I went into a vision that's never happened to me before. I'm having this vision, my eyes are shut, but I can see as clear as I'm seeing you right now. And in this vision, he says, come to my office tomorrow and we will make the preparations. So I carry under my arm for whatever reason. But this obviously is an angel. In right. Your vision. There's something happening. Yeah. Yes. That, that's angelic. And so he tells me, you come to my office tomorrow and we'll make the necessary preparations for this donation. So I know that I was to carry something with me to prove my audit, you know, accountability and books and all that. And I carried some preaching notes. I guess I want to let him know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. So you have a logical side of your brain. <laughs> yeah, I have too. a logic side of my brain. <laughs> so it's the left brain, right brain work kicking in. Right. And so I come up to this, this gate where an attendance is, and he said, he's been waiting on you. And I said, okay, I have my documents and the preaching. He said, leave them here. You won't need them there. And I knew by the Spirit, I had come to the eye of the needle. 
Now, the eye of the needle for some people may know that's that place in, in Israel that is a low gate where the camels would have to bow down and go through. In other words, you don't carry anything through there that's not just made bare. It, it was Jesus used that as an analogy uh, that it's hard, more difficult than uh, for a rich man to get into heaven right. than, uh, than to go through the eye of the needle. Right, because they're carrying his own stuff right. and his own identity and all what I've done. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, you've come in here, it's not by your ministry, it's not anything that you've done, you're coming through here naked and open, if you would, your heart's open. I walk into this room, it's palatial estate. This man was looking out through a glass out in the state, and then he turns around and looks at me, and he said, you have not answered my question that I asked you yesterday. Because he asked me, he said, what would you do with this gift? And I said, well, I'll pay off the building and pay off some debt and, and give some missionaries. I, th I thought that was really gracious of me to say that. And he, I could tell he was frowning at that. And in that moment, Sid, I realized we weren't talking about money. I realized that we're talking about the glory. And I started weeping. You, you know, the minute you said the glory, it came I feel down it. Yeah, right to, here. It's how about right you? Here. Did you feel it? You should receive it in Jesus' name. Because it's not just a feeling or emotional or goosebumps. That it's literally the weightiness of the essence of who He is. And I realized I started weeping, and I bowed my head, and I said, "This is all about the glory, isn't it?" And He smiled and He said, "Yes." And then I knew by the Spirit. He said, but it's not just for your local church. It's for my son, because his inheritance, according to Psalms 2, verse 8, his inheritance is the nations. And he said, when I said to you, because you help restore my son to his brothers, I knew he was talking about the Jewish community. And, and by the way, I looked that up in Matthew. And it says, uh, you know, where, where uh, Jesus says, you've done to the least of these your brothers, you've done unto me. Yeah. The word brothers means f physically, literally, from the womb, yeah. meaning the physical Jew. So there, this whole thing, I realize the timing of the glory coming, and I know we're praying for it, we're believing for it. So in this, I said, I know it's not for me. He said, but there will be times of momentary glory, the kavod of com coming down on you, but it will not come in its fullness until my brothers come in. I understand that being a Gentile, I'm grafted in. And if me grafted in is glorious, how much more shall, shall the Jewish country, the covenant people, be brought into that? That was releasing the full load of glory. That, that is, yeah, I, I, you, have to, you have to know how important that is to me because in addition to the ISN social media network that we have, it's Supernatural Network, we also have an on-air station that covers every home in Israel. Yeah. And my heart, Carrie, yeah. is for the glory to go out of every show we do on the ISN network and when people are in their home in Israel, when people, and this is all over the world, we're on every smartphone and every computer in the world, just go to the, it's free, go to the App Store and type in Sid Roth and download the ISN network. Very simple. I'm sorry, go ahead. Now, what I, what I realized is that because it's the Jew first, so we're believing for the rest of the world and we're believing God for the glory, and I, I believe with all my heart that it'll be the weightiness of God to where all will know Him, from the least to the greatest. It won't be us trying to convince someone theologically. It will just be in this presence yeah, yeah, you essence. Would, you'd never be able to, uh, to, to logically, theologically convince an Orthodox Jew no. that Yeshua is the Messiah intellectually. It's not by man's might nor by man's power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Well, Isaiah 6, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. What was happening? He was having Shekinah, meaning the, the environment of the presence, but then the Lord becoming the mantle Himself upon Him. And when He saw that, He began to have the brokenness. Who am I? I'm undone. And so then God begins to send Him and give Him assignments. But it's in that moment where I, I realize that this glory of the Lord covering the sea, 
the nations, the weightiness of God Himself will be in such a way that people will have visions and dreams and experiences with God Himself, Yahweh, to where I'm the God of your fathers, and, and turn to the Lord in one moment, in one instance. And then part of our grafting in is that the other nations will begin to experience even a greater glory to all. Right now, we're good. I, I enjoy the presence of God, and we get it at times. But just think what it would be when our brothers, the Jews, the covenant people, the circumcision of God comes and the weightiness of God comes, how much more will the rest of the world inhabit that? And, and that's quoted in Scripture by Paul. If it was a blessing for the, when the Jewish people rejected their Messiah, why? The Gentiles could be grafted into the full covenant of God. That's a blessing. If it was a blessing when the uh, Jewish people rejected the Messiah, how much greater blessing, greater glory is it going to mean when they receive their Messiah? What I finished with his dream was the audit that I understood would be that he's saying, you can't profit from this. Your ministry can't profit by you doing this and marketing something. Not this merchandising. Something, merchandise. I can't merchandise. I can't, you know, I like to write books, mm -hmm. but I can't even write a book on how to because it's not a how to. It's the very essence of God coming and blanketing like a mantle. So we're just recipients of the goodness of God and His mercy to be a participant, and we don't bring it in. We're not the doorway. Other revivals have had a, a width and breadth, but this is going to have a depth like we've never seen before. I can't wait. How about you? Carrie, I believe you could release a degree of that glory right now on everyone that is watching. Would Amen. you do that? I will. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have made us one in, through Messiah. And I bless the household of Israel, the faith I release upon them that they would recognize who you are, that those who bless Israel would be blessed of the Lord, and so that we can be participants and recipients of all that Abraham had, and that the blessing comes through even Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now through Yeshua, we receive it as well. So Lord, we so look forward to this glory, this weightiness of you that will outshine anything that's ever happened, any revival, any historical revival, that we haven't seen anything yet, but it's coming. And we pray for our Jewish brethren that they would take hold of the kingdom of God that is at hand and receive this glory that you have in store for them. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. Psalm 122.6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. The word prosper in the Hebrew means far more. It's just like in your uh, visitation, far more than money. Right. The word prosper means heart peace. What this world needs, what you need right now is heart peace, which means a thousand may fall at your right hand, ten thousand is your left, but it's not coming near you. In Yeshua's name, I seal everything we've said. Amen.